Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction drama film, Cloud Atlas. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Six stories take place spanning thousands of years in human history. Independent yet connected in one way or another, they constitute a splendid Cloud Atlas. The first story takes place in 1849 in Southern America. A young lawyer is into his father-in-law's slave trade business by providing legal services. He arrives at his father-in-law's plantation in a Pacific Island nation. There, he's shocked to see the slaves are abused. The manager says the black slaves can work in the hot sunlight, as the camels do, and the foreman is whipping a young slave, who is tied to a tree. Looking at him with great sympathy, the lawyer doesn't know what he can do. The slave looks back at him and sees his sympathy and helplessness. After their eye contact, the lawyer falls into sudden dizziness instead of love. The physician feeds him with liquid medicine, but it's slow poison instead. Then the lawyer and the physician get on a ship to return to Europe. The lawyer gets very sick because of the slow poison that the physician feeds him every day. On the ship, he meets the young slave again. He asks the handsome lawyer to save him, since he ran away from the plantation and will be killed if sent back. So the lawyer finds a position for him to be a sailor. But the captain who looks down upon the blacks only pretends to hire the slave and takes a chance to order a man to shoot him. The lawyer pushes aside the rifle and saves the slave. The slave shows his ability and skill. There are far more he can do than just being a slave and working in the fields like a camel. So the lawyer and the slave become best friends. When the lawyer becomes feeble, the physician thinks it's time to kill him without being noticed and rob him of all the gold. Fortunately, the slave rushes in and kills the wicked physician. Also, they get back all the gold coins that the physician took from the lawyer. After the voyage, the lawyer takes the slave into his home, and he has his diary of the Pacific voyage published, titled, The Pacific Journey. He realizes equality, love, and mutual understanding are the most precious in life. So he burns the contract in front of his father-in-law, and he and his wife devote themselves to the movement to liberate the black slaves. The second story takes place in Cambridge in 1936. A talented young composer has a boyfriend, who is a promising young physicist. He wants to become a great composer, so that a better self can match the physicist. After making up his mind, he leaves his boyfriend for London to pursue his dream, in the hope of coming back to him as a man of status. Some while later, he succeeds in becoming an assistant to a renowned composer, Vivian. His brilliant talent helps Vivian in composing many great pieces. While working for Vivian, the young composer often writes letters to his lover, telling him he always wears the expensive leather vest given by the physicist, so that he feels as if they were still staying with each other. One day, the composer finds many other books, The Pacific Journey, the book of the lawyer's voyage diary. Inspired by this book, he begins to conceive the Cloud Atlas Sextet for orchestra, which will express his genuine love for the physicist. However, the cunning Vivian wants to plagiarize it. He threatens the young composer, and they have a fight. During the fight, the young composer shoots Vivian by mistake. In a panic, he flees to a hotel to continue his composition. When he completes his great works Cloud Atlas, the young composer writes his last letter to his boyfriend. Then he shoots himself dead, right before the boyfriend reaches there to see him. The third story takes place in the US in 1973. The young composer's boyfriend has become a renowned physicist. One day, the physicist and a journalist are stuck in a lift. While waiting for help, they talk to each other and exchange their phone numbers. The physicist is later entangled in a conspiracy, as the nuclear energy plant and a fossil fuel company are fighting to monopoly the market. The physicist writes an important scientific report on the flaws of the nuclear energy plant. He calls the journalist in an attempt to reveal the conspiracy to the public, but he is murdered soon, and the important documents are taken away. His death is disguised as a suicide. Later, the journalist comes to meet the physicist, only to find he's shot dead and discover the letters written by the physicist's lover in the earlier years. Their love story touches the journalist so much. But her journalistic instinct tells her there is more to the story than just a man committing suicide. So she decides to investigate and reveal the truth. With the help of another scientist named Isaac and the physicist's niece who's also a physicist, the journalist gets copies of the important documents, which are evidence of a big crime. As she gets closer to the truth, Isaac is killed, but fortunately, the journalist escapes. She later publishes an article exposing the contents of the physicist's report. Her report reveals the truth to the public, smashes the conspiracy, and stops the great danger. 
Her brave story is written in a book titled Half-Life by the physicist Sneese. The fourth story takes place in London in 2012. A publisher publishes a young black writer, but the writer kills a critic out of dissatisfaction with the comment on the book. However, this tragedy makes the book a bestseller, and the publisher makes a great fortune. The publisher is threatened by the writer's cohort, who wants to extort money from him, so he goes to his brothers for shelter. But his brother tricks him into staying in a nursery, where the elderly lose their freedom and are treated as prisoners. They're trapped there, as their relatives discard them as useless troublemakers. At the nursery, the publisher makes friends with three elderly people. With the joint efforts and wisdom, the four of them eventually escape from the nursery. The publisher reunites with his first lover. He then publishes the book about the brave journalist who has inspired him with the book, Half-Life. And also, he writes a book about his experience in the nursery home, and the story is made into a movie later. The fifth story takes place in Neo Soul in 2144. The clones are slaved by humans. A clone girl named Sami is an attendant in a cafe. She works in the daytime and sleeps at night without any freedom. After a certain period of use, the clones will be destroyed secretly. The proteins from their bodies will be recycled and made into food for other clones who are still in working condition. But the clones, including Sami, know nothing about their destiny. One day, another clone girl notices Sami's mind of independence. She then secretly takes Sami to watch a movie, which tells the story of the publisher. Sami is deeply influenced by the hero, who never surrendered himself to violence. While they are watching the movie, the humans come to kill them. The clone girl is killed, but Sami is rescued by a man from the anti-government union. He teaches her the value of freedom and the dignity of being a clone. He even tells her that the clones are not different from the pure-blood humans. The Union persuades Sami to record a video to reveal the oppression and slavery on the clones. Sami comes to the broadcasting station, from which her voice will spread to the world. However, while they are making the video, the anti-government Union is defeated by the authorities. The man who rescued Sami sacrificed his life to the cause of liberating the clone slaves. Luckily before Sami gets killed, her speech, I have a dream too, has spread to the whole world. I have a dream, because I have a dream. The sixth story takes place on Hawaii Island in the 106th winter after the fall of humankind. In this era, most humans are deprived of life by disasters such as pandemics and pollution. Only a few remain alive, and the highly developed human society collapses. Now the human community splits into three branches, the primitives, the cannibals, and the civilized. The primitives on Hawaii Island worship Sami as a saint because of her legendary speech, I have a dream too. These primitives are invaded and slaughtered by the cannibals. Zachary, a young man of the primitive tribe, hides cowardly, while his families are killed by the cannibals. The civilized come to Hawaii Island to look for the transmitting tower, which they can use to communicate with aliens on other planets, so that they can flee away from the devastated planet Earth and migrate to other planets. Knowing its location though, Zachary is very reluctant to guide the way for them, because it's believed to be an evil and forbidden place by the primitive tribes. But upon seeing that the civilized use their high techs to save his beloved niece, who is dying after stepping on a toxic scorpionfish, Zachary feels grateful and so decides to help the civilized. Soon they arrive at the transmitting tower and start to send signals to the alien planets. But at that time, Zachary's long-held belief is shocked when he comes to know that Sami, the saint that they've been worshipping for generations, was actually a humanoid. When Zachary comes back to his village, the homeland is burned. All the tribe men and women are slaughtered by the cannibals, and only his niece survives. Zachary takes her to join the civilized in migrating to another planet. Later on the new planet, Zachary marries a woman of the civilized, and they soon have many children and grandchildren. Zachary is seen passing his life stories onto these kids. The six stories happen in different places at different times in human history. The Voyage Diary of the Lawyer Fighting Against Slavery inspires the composer, whose letters to his lover encourage the journalist to reveal a conspiracy. Because of the journalist's bravery, her story is published by the publisher, and the publisher's own story at a nursery is made into a movie. While the movie inspires a clone and gives her the strength to fight against the slavery life. Furthermore, the clone's legendary speech turns her into the totem of the far future primitive tribes on Earth and encourages the primitives to migrate to another planet. The legacy of love and freedom in the former times is inherited by the latter in different ways and changes their lives. Just as Sami said, our lives are not our own. From womb to tomb, from the uprising of humanity to its fall, we are bound to others, past and present. 
At whatever times, freedom and love are the eternal pursuits of humankind in joint efforts of many generations or even reincarnations. After struggling through every crime and slavery, we give birth to our future. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.